Welcome back for another exciting lesson in Math 8. This is Unit 3, Lesson 11. I saw you roll your eyes at me when I said exciting lesson. This is equations of all kinds of lines. Today we are going to specifically focus on vertical and horizontal lines and what their equations are and how we can tell what they look like. First thing I want you to do is take a look at these four problems or these four graphs and decide which one doesn't belong. Maybe you chose A as the one that doesn't belong because A is the only one that has a slope that's decreasing or maybe because the lines are spread further apart. Maybe you chose graph B because it's the only one that has lines that are not parallel. Maybe you chose graph C because it's the only one that has lines that are horizontal. None of the other ones are like that. Maybe you chose graphs, graph D because it's the only one that has parallel lines that follow a positive, um, a positive slope. Any number of reasons could be the reason for why something doesn't belong as long as you have correct and effective evidence of truth there. Today, what we're going to work on is looking at what happens when we get a vertical and a horizontal line. In this case, what we're after is we're supposed to plot at least 10 points whose Y coordinate is negative four. What do you notice about them? I find it quite effective to go ahead and, and write or to make a, a function table that shows me how to use this. I'm going to use a horizontal for, or a horizontal function table where I have my X and Y coordinates set up like this. And what I know about this, it says whose y coordinate is negative 4. So every time I do this, let's make sure I do y equals negative 4. So what if x is negative 1? Then y is negative 4. If x is 0, then y is negative 4. If x is 1, then y is negative 4. If x is 2, then y is negative 4. Are you kind of catching on to the pattern here? What we're saying, y coordinate is 4. I have no other option for that use. So what I can do with this, with that negative 4, I can come right along here, along this negative 4. I had that ordered pair and that ordered pair. I have 1 negative 4 and 2 negative 4, and you can see a pattern developing. That pattern would continue all the way along because we know that lines have the potential to go on forever. So when I look at this, my line that says y equals negative 4 is right here. So now how would I make an equation for that line? Which one makes the most sense of these four that are down here? This one says x equals negative 4, yet I didn't use x equals negative 4. I could have and had a point right here because I see negative 4 and negative 4 right here. But that's not the case all the way through. x does not always equal negative 4. If I were to use this equation, it says y equals negative 4 times x. Well, we've learned this is the constant of proportionality meaning that my slope would be negative 4 over 1. That would mean that I have to go down 4 units and to the right one, which means that I actually don't get a vertical line out of this one. That one can't be it. Um, this one, y equals negative 4, that one seems like that makes the most sense because y coordinate is negative 4. y coordinate is negative 4. It's the exact same values, just in a different symbols. We know that this last one can't be it because when you add x and y together, it equals negative 4. And that doesn't happen except for right here. This is the only one, 0, negative 4, that will actually make this one true. So why is it that y equals negative 4 is the most accurate or makes the most sense? Because all y coordinates are only equal to negative 4. It's our only option, okay? All right, so what about this next part? It says plot at least 10 points where x coordinate is three. And you're probably thinking, oh, okay, well, if the first time we did this, all of my y coordinates were negative four, what do we have right here? If my x has to be three, then x has to be three, 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 three. There is no other option for it, right? So when we talk about this question, what do you notice about them? X is always equal to three. That could be something like negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, five. And I have 10 ordered pairs, but the thing is that they always equal, the X coordinate is always equal to three. So what does that look like? Well, if we take a look at here, I had ones like this. I had negative three, negative four, three, negative five, three, negative or excuse me, 3, negative 5, 3, negative 4, 3, negative 3, negative 2, negative... You just kind of see the idea of the pattern that's being developed here. 
when all of the x coordinates are equal to 3, I get a vertical line. And it's a perfect vertical line. So now when we talk about this side over here, with which equation makes the most sense to represent this situation? And this situation right here, the only thing that I can really think of is x equals 3 because we are literally saying x is 3. There is no other option for this. Simply x is 3. So then what happens if we take a graph of x equals negative 2? Well, then we are stating right here that x is negative 2. There is no other option. x only equals negative 2. So when we take a look on here on my coordinate plane, back to this one, x only equals negative 2. Well, this is negative 2, 0, negative 2, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 2, 3. You start to see the idea of the pattern when x equals negative 2. That means there's no other option for the x coordinates. And we see a vertical line. What if we take the next one and we say y equals 5? Well, if y equals 5, I think by now we've kind of caught on that that means that the y coordinate is only equal to 5. If I go and find any ordered pair, like if I like 1, 5, okay, I also have to like 2, 5, and 3, 5, and 4, 5, and 5, 5, and 6, 5, because y is only equal to 5. That's the only option I get for y, and that gives me a horizontal line. So that's kind of some cool information. Y only equals 5. We saw in this one, we saw a horizontal line. We saw in the previous one, a vertical line. Alrighty. So when we talk about these values and we talk about X and Y are horizontal lines and vertical lines, we want to think about horizontal lines are always going to represent a constant Y coordinate and vertical lines will always represent a constant X coordinate. The next activity here is same perimeter, talking about a perimeter on, uh, on a rectangle. Specifically in this rectangle, it has a perimeter of 50 units. Now, when we talk about the perimeter of any figure, we talk about the perimeter is always equal to twice the length plus twice the width. Another way to think about that is the perimeter is equal to twice the length plus the width. And so by, by that understanding, if the perimeter is 50 and we're talking about twice the length plus the width, then we can divide that 2 out of there and find out that twice the length and the width is going to be equal to 25. That will help guide us to know what kinds of lengths and widths we can use for all of these different um, all these different uh, rectangles. So maybe we start right here and we start with just one and 24. The sum is 25 and two and 23, three and 22. Let's go ahead and jump and let's do like five and 20. That would be a good one. Six and 19, seven and 18. Those ones all out to 25. Let's make another jump, 12, and 13, 13, and 12. Oh, wow. Hey, kind of went backwards after that one. So that means that 14 would be with 11. And let's say maybe if I go to 20, then that would be 5. All of these, just double check, make sure that the sum of each of those is 25. Otherwise, it won't be working. Also, when we graph it, we should see that it won't work. So now our job right here is we have one rectangle whose perimeter is 50 units that's graphed on this coordinate plane. The lower left vertex is at the origin. And we need to make sure and go ahead and draw more rectangles with a perimeter of 50 on each of these. So as we go ahead and, and go through, here's 1 and 24, 2 and 23, 3 and 22, 5 and 20. I'm going to go silent and just go ahead and graph these. Right. You can kind of see a pattern developing. And with that pattern, 
we can recognize that there is a line that says make sure each rectangle has a lower left vertex at the origin, two sides on the axes. So what I would want to, to be able to do with this is I would want to be able to draw these rectangles across. So like this one right here, 1 and 24, would be a rectangle that looks like this. And then if I were to pick another one, I could see that like if it's we take this rectangle right here. And again, keep in mind that the other two sides that we're not drawing in are the X and the Y axes. Okay, and you can see that there's a lot of different rectangles. Here's my original rectangle for this situation. And then question is, what's the, the next question that they'll actually ask us is this, is if every, every vertex is there, these vertexes all, do, all land on a line, draw this line and write an equation for it. So the line that we're talking about is right here. Now there's one thing that I, I want to make mention of before I write the equation for this line. I can't include 25 right here because 25 and 0, even though 25 and 0 as a length and width would add up to 50, 0 can't be one of my lengths or my widths because then we don't actually have a side length, so we can't have a rectangle. The same is true here at 0 and 25. So what I did with this, you can see that I left an open circle at the very ends of these to indicate that we are using this line, but we are not including 25 as one of those actual ordered pairs or one of the coordinates for those ordered pairs is one of the sides. Still though, we can write an equation for this. Remember that when we write an equation for this, what we've learned is slope intercept form. So we need to know what the slope is and we need to know what the y intercept is. Now we just talked about that y intercept a moment ago that it's the line crosses the y axis here at zero and 25. And then our slope, what we can see with that is we can do this a couple different ways. We can look at this, this line and we can find out the rise over the run and we see that it's a rise of negative one over positive one in a constant pattern. So we see a slope of negative one over one. Perhaps if this coordinate plane was too small to really work with or had larger numbers, or if we just wanted to double check our slope, we could double check up here on our table. 24 to 23 right here is a negative one. 23, 22 is a minus 1, 22 to 20 is a minus 2. We compare that to the x is where we add 1, add 1, add 2. And when we take our change in y over our change in x, negative 1 over 1, negative 1 over 1, negative 2 over 2, no matter what we do, that slope will always come out as negative 1, giving us an equation that says all y coordinates are equal to negative 1 for the slope times the x coordinate plus 25. And then we can just verify that that equation works by substituting these values from our table in up here just to check a couple. Negative 1 times um, 1 plus 25 is supposed to be equal to 24. That makes that negative 1 plus 25 is certainly 24. And you can see we substitute those values for x and y many times, and we'll see that it comes out true every time. So then the final question for this lesson is what is the slope of this line? And how does the slope describe how the width changes as the length changes or vice versa? We saw that the slope here was equal to negative 1 over positive 1. What I like to do is I like to go ahead and label my change in y over my change in x. My change in y was the negative 1 on the width over positive 1 on the length. That usually helps me to understand how I can start to describe this. What I'm saying is as I decrease by 1 on the width, I am increasing by 1 on the length. So decrease by 1 on the width, increase by 1 on the length. And this is a common, uh, the, the correct and accurate response for all the way through this. I should say then increase. So when I decrease by one on the width, I then I increase by one on the length. And this is a constant pattern that we can see evidenced in our table as well as into our graph. So the big lesson of today is this. 
Horizontal lines in the coordinate plane represent situations where the y value doesn't change. Vertical lines represent situations where the x value doesn't change at all, while the y value does change. We see the representation of that is stating if we have an ordered pair of 0 and 13, and it's describing for all points on a line where the y value is always 13, then our equation would be y equals 13. If we're talking about the equation x equals negative 4, then we're describing a vertical line that passes through the point negative 4, 0, along with all other points that have negative 4 as the x coordinate. Hopefully we caught on that summary. Horizontal lines always, always, always have y equals whatever that y coordinate is. Vertical lines always, always have the equation x equals and whatever the coordinates are for all those x, x's for making that line. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Send me an email, hang out, whatever it may be. Have a great day.